ransomware. I choose you. That's the thing, apparently, now on PC. So we have a new Pokemon Go ransomware, which affects Windows systems, so I thought I'd take a look at it. Here's the original file. It is only 623 kilobytes in size. Must be an awfully small Pokemon, you might say. But when it executes, uh, it doesn't leave a very small footprint. Might be a nice Pokemon episode. Size doesn't matter. Whatever. So I'm just gonna run this. It does require admin privileges, but once it's in the system, it is going to remain essentially invisible until it has done its work. It's going to start taking up a ton of CPU after that little thing executed, probably some kind of script. The disk activity is also going to soar, and uh, soon our files will be encrypted. Let's take a look at our files right away. As you can see, most of the job is already done, but it's going to scan the system thoroughly, so this is going to take a while. I have also learned that this ransomware can infect flash drives, and uh, that is a popular delivery mechanism. So that's another interesting fact. The file extension, as you might have noticed, is .locked. Since I have gone through this process before, let me just tell you that you can actually just end task. But that does not save you. Most of your files are encrypted already, as you can see. And if you reboot the system, you're going to be greeted with something really nice. As we attempt to reboot the system, the desktop just stops responding and it's going to eventually crash and give you a blue screen of death. There you go. Now we're logging in. And I'm pretty sure instead of our usual desktop, we're going to see some other stuff run here in a moment. Ooh, device setup's running for some reason. That was unexpected. Oh, cool, Pikachu! But we also have blackhat2015 2015 at gmail.com and we have Arabic. Oh, well, I think I have a friend who can deal with this. Hang on a second, let me just make a quick call here. Can I talk to Donald? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, the press. Right, I just found something in Arabic. It, it's, it's like, there, there's something on my screen that's Arabic. Is, isn't that, you're gonna take care of that, right? I mean, that's not supposed to happen. It's, it's Arabic, I'm, I'm not kidding. I'm freaking out right now. All right, thanks. Oh, that should have it fixed. What? Really? Ah. Oh. Well, he did try to reverse engineer this file by building walls around different components, but um, eventually his system got bricked. So I guess we're on our own now. Thankfully, according to Malwarebytes, this file does not have any kind of cryptor or um, obfuscation involved. So I'm just going to load it up in my analysis system and see what I can do. Right, so after some quick decompiling, I have managed to reveal most of the source code, if not all of it. It's obviously a Visual Studio app or something. It's Windows Form application. And uh, if we take a look here, it is Regendale that's being used here, AES-256. So the password is being sent, and uh, I'm sure this is the uh, string involved. Since this is symmetric encryption, you can probably decrypt your files. It does have some very interesting functions, like kill AV. So maybe it tries to disable your antivirus program a lot of other functions, like uh, this one to run it with elevated privileges. And I'm sure it does more things in the background than meets the eye, but I'm not gonna go into too much detail. So I'm just gonna end it here. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. <laughs> we also have some new kinds of projects coming up. I might be joining Karsten Han from GData next week. So you should totally subscribe if you haven't already. And hit that like button if you enjoyed this. Once again, this is Leo. Thank you for watching, and as always, stay informed, stay secure.